In the last video, we created our game over menu and we created the UI to show our lives here. And in this video, we are going to use these two elements uh, by writing some code so that we can interact with them and use them for something so that our health or lives will be reduced every time a monster hits the red portal. To make it easier for ourselves, when we're testing, we need to move the red portal closer to the blue portal so we don't need to wait a long time to check all the lives have been reduced. So basically, we can take red spawn inside the level manager script and say the point position, the start position is 1.1. And this will make the portal spawn right next to each other, basically. So when we've done that, we can go into Unity and just test that this works. First of all, the game over menu, we don't need it to be showing all the time. We only need to show it when the game is over. So just click on the game over menu and remove it up here. Just disable it and then click start. And now you'll see the two portals are right next to each other. And if we play the game, it still works. The monsters can go from one portal to another here, right? Anyway, um, we need to write some code in our game manager. So let's open up the game manager. And let's see, what do we need to do? We need to have some health. So let's write some lives here. Let's make a um, private. Let's see what we want to do. Is maybe we should clean up here at some point, but just do it on the waves. So private integer called lives. And we don't need to serialize that field actually because we're not going to set it from the inspector. We're just going to do it um, from our um, start function here. So let's say um, in start, we could set lives to 10, for example. But the lives we are setting there should be reflected out here on the UI. So let's say that we set our live text to zero here. Then when the game starts, this live zero here needs to be updated so that it reflects the amount of lives we have actually, actually set from our code. Right, so to do that, we need to create uh, something else. We need to create a property exactly the same as we have for our currency here. Here we're setting our currency and it will set the text on the currency text as we did earlier. So we can make a public integer called um, lives. And this just, say get return lives and remember to write this with a non-capital letter if you return this one you'll get a non um a stack overflow exception because it jumps between these two all the all the time so let's do like this and then we need to write the set function and the set part is the important part here so let's write set and in here we need to set this dot lives equals value so we set the lives equal to the actual value we set in and then we need to set the text for the lives out here and to do that we will need to have reference to this text so go to your game manager script again go to the top and under lives you write private text uh, lives text txt let's just do the same as we did before and then we say serialize field to so serialize the field and save here so now that it's serialized we can go out to our game manager see that there's text called lives text and then take the uh, lives text here and drag it onto it so we have a reference to the actual text out here then we need to go back in and then start, we need to replace lives with non-capital to lives with large, so lives. So you will use lives with capital letter. And it, it means that we're using this lives here. And then set it equal to 10. Okay. Um, as you can see, live, well, lives, there we go. As you can see, when we set this, well, nothing is happening out here when I'm running the game. Nothing uh, changes. I can still run the game and it's still zero. And that's because I haven't written the code for changing the lives here. So I need to go here to the set function and say lives text text equals value to string. There we go. Actually, let's see if I need to do string or if it does it by itself. No, I need to do string. 
So equals value to string. So we take the value we set, set it to string and set it equal to the lives text. And this means if I save and run this game, it will change to 10 now, as you can see. So now our health is equal to the actual value we have in our script. And that's pretty good because we can look at that value and see if we have a game over, right? So, um, game over, game over. We need to make something for game over, I guess. Yeah. Um, let's make a function called game over inside the game manager. Down here in the bottom, let's say public void game over. And what does demo game over need to do? Well, if it isn't a game over, so we need to make a boolean. Let's just go up here in the top, make a private bool called game over equals false. So from the get go, when the game starts, it's not game over. And when that one is true, when game over is true, well, then the game has ended. Okay. So we say if game over. So if there isn't game over, then we say game over equals true. Because when we call the game over function, well, if it isn't game over, then we set game over to true. And then we need to show the game over menu. Okay. So let's see the game over menu. Well, that's just a game object. So we can just go up here in the top and write private game object game over menu and then serialize it and then we need to make a reference to this variable so that we can access the game over menu so on the game manager we will have the game over menu if we remember to save and let's go back here there we go game over menu then we take the game over and move it here then we can go back in here and go to the game over function and say game over menu dot set active true okay so yeah this will work i'm not sure if we will need this game over variable right now um but maybe we'll need it later that's why i'm creating it because as far as i remember i created this because i need it later um but we can always remove it if it's not going to be needed because right now it has no functionality it's just there but I just want to create it to write this function out so it, it's finished. Um, yeah, so that's why I did that. Anyway, this will show the game over menu. And when we have shown the game over menu, well, then we simply need to um, yeah, rest be able to restart the game and everything. But when do we need to call this or execute this game over menu? Well, we need to execute it um when we have zero lives left right so basically we can go to our lives um property here and say well when we have set the value here then we can say if lives are less or equal to zero then we call game over and we say that this dot lives equals zero just if it goes in minus one then we just change to to zero just to make sure that it looks better with zero than minus one lives right so when we have set the lives and everything set the text well then we just check this and we call game over. basically we can also we can also call game over before before we show the text um it's basically it does exactly the same so i'm not sure what what's best anyway um so now we're checking every time we set lives at some point we reduce the lives then we said, well, a lives is less than zero. If not, well, then we just set the live out there. We have three lives left, for example. But if it's less or equal to zero, then we set it to zero and we call the game over function. And then we say, if it's not game over, then we set game over true and we show our game over menu. Okay. So where do we need to call lives? Well, we need to call lives every single time our um, a monster, um, what's it called, it hits the red portal, right? And we know that inside the monster code. So let's go to our monster and find our on trigger enter there. Inside this function here, or inside this if statement, we know that for a fact that our monster hit the red portal. So here we need to say game manager that instance dot lives 
minus minus okay this line of code here will execute this property so it would jump in here and check the lives it will reduce the lives and set the text and at some point it will check the lives and call game over okay so let's check if these things works now let's save and let's play the game and now it shows up right away let's see here um, game over it is off let's see why it is calling maybe I'm I fucked something up maybe let's see um, lives here yeah that makes sense that it calls this it calls this code right away because this line of code is not above it so let's put that line of code so we set the amount of lives before before and then we check everything okay that makes sense that it does like that let's try one more time yeah so now it doesn't show right away we have 10 lives let's try to click the next wave button and now we have nine click again then we can just keep clicking right so we reduce all our lives and we have seven five four so now we should die three two and one and now we should have zero there we go and now we have zero so now our um, what's it called our uh, monsters um, reduced all our health and our game over menu shows but we don't have any code here right now so we need to add some code here but there's also something else we need to do we need to make sure that our next wave button doesn't spawn again let's say that our game over menu didn't cover it so you can see here well then I would be able to click again and start the next wave even though we have a game over and now it goes to like it keeps going to minus minus one here um, yes should do this though. I'm not sure why it didn't execute this one. Why it keeps going to minus one? Um, because it says value to string here, so it needs to say lives. Sorry, it needs to say lives to string here instead. Then it shouldn't be able to go in minus one. Anyway, um, yes, we need to make sure that this next wave button doesn't show. So let's just check where do we have that. Uh, we have some wave button somewhere. Wave active tower button price. Um, we should set active somewhere. Wave button, there we go. In game manager, we say wave button active false. Let's see where else we find all references here. Here we said it's true and that's remove monster okay so if wave active and game over so if wave is act isn't active and we don't have a game over then we set the wave button to active right this means that if i go here let's just make it easier for ourselves and say that our our lives are equal to one that's four, that's not a one. And let's try again. So we have one health. We play the game. And we end it. And if we move the game over menu, the next wave button is not there. And I can't start another wave by mistake. Okay. Um, we also need to make sure that those buttons works uh, work for something. So uh, let's make sure that we can actually restart the game. So inside the game manager, we'll also have to create a restart function. So let's just make a, a public void restart. And in here we say uh, scene manager. Right click quick actions using unity engine scene manager load scene scene manager dot get active scene name so basically i'm just checking what is the active scene well the active scene is level one or two or whatever and just reloads the same level another thing um we might pause our game later when we open up our menu and stuff and just to make sure that our game is running when we restart the game i would like already to say time dot time scale 
equals one. If we set time scale to zero, well, then everything, everything freezes and it doesn't move, it doesn't animate or anything, and we are going to use that for pausing our game later. Um, so just to make sure that everything runs again after our game, let's say our menu is open and we froze everything and, and just in the same time, our game was, we had game over or something, right? Well, just to make sure that nothing bad happens, we just set time scale back to one to make sure that everything works again when we restart. So play the game again. And let's see what happens. Oh, wait, <laughs> we need to assign the button. We haven't assigned it. Um, go to your game over, try to show it again. Click on restart. And then on the button script here, there is an unclick function. If you click plus on that, and let's just move this up to make sure you can see it. If you click the little plus here, this one pops up and we take our game manager, drag it here, save function, game manager and find restart and we might as well make quit right away so go to the game under this public void quit game application dot uh, just call quit yes application that quit this will quit the game let's try to save that so we can go on the quit button quit click quit it and then click that little plus again take the game manager and drag it onto here select the function uh, game manager and find quit game okay and if we take game over again remove the little tick here play again start the wave and boom our game is over we click the restart button everything is fine we restart the wave and everything and we can play the game one more time here and we died again. So quit doesn't work in the editor. So if you want to test if it works, you can go to uh, build settings and then just uh, build. And I'm just going to call it uh, test build. Then you can run the game um, when it's done building. And then you can click the quit button to see if it works. It simply doesn't work in the editor because it does. it's not going to quit the editor. Uh, when you have tested the build, make sure that you reset everything. So you go back to the level manager and in here you can set the position back to 11.6. So it spawns at the right position and you should go to your game manager and say that our lives, where are they uh, here, is equal to 10, right? Because now we're done testing this. So when you play the game now, it should... Uh, it, it, it should look like, like it did before. Here we go. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And remember to like my uh, Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. Also, don't forget that Inscope Studios is a community founder page, so all your support helps me out a lot. You can support me in different ways. You can support me on Patreon. And if you do so, then you can get every single project that I've ever created, and you will get all the assets and everything. And they are, of course, free to use in as many projects as you want, both commercial and private, of course. And you can also get one of my projects as a standalone product if you're only interested in one or two, for example. And then you can get it by clicking the link in the bottom of the screen here. So thank you very much for watching.